is truly a momentous occasion in that we are here to be able to talk about black maternal health because we recognize that black women are three to four times likely to die from uh, complications related to having a baby. I'm here today because my mission is to connect with other organizations and learn more about the maternal health, black maternal health here in Charlotte, North Carolina, so that I can continue to promote different resources and initiatives for black women's health. I'm here because of my own personal story um, with maternal health and want to bring more awareness to the issue of black maternal health mortality in the United States. As we all know that the mortality health rate is three times more than that of any other developed country. And this conference is to provide more education and insight into this issue. I'm very clear that black women have worse maternal outcomes across the country, but here in North Carolina, the outcomes are growing and the disparities are growing. I came here today to learn more about black maternal health we do a lot of community events and I want to be able to arm the people that we come in contact with information on how they can prevent some of the mortality rates that we're seeing in black maternal, maternal health. DNA. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, but I was fed. Raised on collard greens and cornbread, and I begged for seconds. Extra servings of the things that I couldn't seem to get enough of, but it's strange. As much as I love the food, fried chicken, green beans, mac and cheese, buttered rice, mason jars of sweet tea, freshly made and full of ice, the liquid gold brimming at the top of my glass. After an inconceivable number of heart-shattering goodbyes, I cannot for the life of me bear another repast. Another meal in honor of a preventable death. Another first cry of life coupled with a last sigh of breath because as much as I love the taste of home cooking, I would much rather have the taste of life. A second serving, if you will, another chance to get it right because maybe I am to blame for playing strong for so long they think I'm immune to pain. An Oscar-worthy performance indeed. Well, the black woman is cast as supporting actress and the lead in the drama that is the maternal health crisis. So when the postpartum mother says, I can't breathe, instead of heeding her cry, they disregard her needs because unlike that of George Floyd, there's no visible knee pinned on her neck and racism can't possibly exist within a medic as if James Marion Sims did not build his legacy upon the corpses of black mothers and black youth as if the American dream itself does not rest on our backs too. Now please feel free to stop me when I stop telling the truth because in a world of senseless killings, we're the Lincolns and you're the Booth, but we have grown tired of the assassinations of our black bodies, our black babies, our black persons, our black men. Tired of being the sacrifice for this country's countless sins, sins you won't even atone for. How can you fix something you won't possibly name? Repent for the evils you've never claimed, oh America. <laughs> That's like attempting to treat the leaves while refusing to heal the root. It just won't do. It is not enough. You must do more. You must address the worms that live within the rotted core because the price of your ignorance are the cemeteries full of mothers who trusted you with their lives. The body of the African American since the first slave ships ported on these sandy coasts has served one purpose and one purpose only to this race-driven country and that is to reinforce your desperate need for white supremacy. A belief that travels far beyond that of the hooded Klansmen, but one that permeates the entire fabric of our society and the historical, political, economic, and institutional systems in which the not so mysterious they maintain power. So when they could no longer profit off of her body, her womb, and the myriad of 
children she birthed, groomed by your forefathers to pick the cotton that clothed this very nation, as opposed to kissing her feet, you chose instead to retreat further into your ignorance and fabricate harmful stereotypes that haunt women like me to this day. Distorted images used to conceal your insecurities, justify your abuse, and assuage your guilt because how could the loud, angry, naive black mother not deserve to be killed? Suppose it is arrogance that gives her the idea that she can bring life into this world and live to tell the story, or maybe it is her hope. A hope that the next time she cries out for help, you will listen. So when the dust settles and the sunshine of this new day shines warmly on your skin and the words from this poem slowly but surely begin to fade into the deep recesses of your mind, think of this. Black mothers matter. And though motherhood is not the sole pinnacle of womanhood, it is sacred. It is divine. It is transformative. It is beautiful, yes. <laughs> despite the pains in her abdomen following the water that breaks, despite the blood and the sweat and the hours it takes, there is beauty in the act of giving life. And there is even more beauty in witnessing that life as it grows to create a legacy that is wonderful. To have the luxury of planning birthdays, not funerals. Oh, America, we're not asking for anything other than the most basic human right, and that is the right to live. I can't share with you how happy I am to see all of your faces this morning on this first day of National Black Maternal Health Week. I think you should cry. <laughs> and I'm naked, I have really good faces and friends and colleagues and what I am witnessing today is a collective force of interdisciplinary warriors committed to changing the landscape of black internal health as it stands today in our community. Earlier this week, we were delighted with the news that this conference, a first of its kind in Mecklenburg County, was sold out in just three short weeks. I'm Congresswoman Alma Adams, and I am so honored to bring greetings to you, my constituents here in North Carolina's 12th Congressional District. Congratulations to your tireless leader, Shanavia Montgomery, and the entire team for bringing this vision to life. I know it's just the beginning of a, a new and exciting chapter for this organization. I am of the opinion that your tax bracket should not dictate your ability to access quality health care. But the dark reality is that in many corners of our nation, it does. And as you all know, that burden is felt by some communities more than others. These are, are not new ideas, but today, even a quarter of the way through the 21st century, in the wealthiest nation in the history of the world, disparities in healthcare continue to grow. The black maternal health crisis is, is perhaps one of the most glaring examples of this inequality, given that the United States is one of only 13 countries in the world where the rate of maternal mortality is worse than it was 25 years ago. Our maternal mortality rate is the worst by far in the developed world. Most disheartening, 80% of these deaths are preventable. My name is Antrell Tyson, and I have the uh, honor of serving as the regional director for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services representing the Biden and Harris administration in the eight states and six federally tribes in the southeast. I thought it was important for me to be here today once because I know that but, uh, black maternal health is a key priority for the Biden and Harris administration and thank you to Representative Alma Adams for speaking on many of the things that we have done as an administration to make sure that we are addressing the maternal health crisis here in America, particularly as out on how it is impacting the black community. I work for the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, and we have numerous priorities that are occurring through our secretary's uh, administration. 
And three, the key leading priorities are listed here around behavioral health and resilience, child and family well-being, as well as strong and resilience workforce. And we've been very fortunate at, um, in the team that I get to work with. Within these three areas, we see maternal health throughout. If you look at our data just for 2018-2019, here you can see on this slide that over 80% of those cases that were pregnancy-related deaths, we view, um, the committee reviews them as being preventable. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here to introduce you guys. Uh, as a public health practitioner, though, uh, it, this is frustrating. I'm glad that we're here, uh, but it's frustrating because we shouldn't have to be here. Uh, this is not a problem that has to exist. It doesn't exist everywhere, and it doesn't impact everybody in the same way. Uh, so we shouldn't have to be here. Uh, it's not just, uh, and it is really uh, important that we do quick work uh, to make a difference in this community, uh, to make this not the case. Uh, as you all heard this morning around the nation and across our state, uh, and right here at home in Mecklenburg County, maternal health outcomes for black women, uh, even those in higher income brackets and great neighborhoods are lagging further and further and further behind. Here in Mecklenburg County over the last five years, where we have data finalized for every one non-Hispanic black woman, uh, non-Hispanic white mother who died during, uh, during or soon after birth, we've lost five non-Hispanic black mothers during that same time. That's 15 to 20 young black women we've lost too soon, and in most cases it was absolutely preventable. It's not just the lives of those mothers though, uh, it's also the loss to those infants and those families that have generational consequences. Dominguez, Shea Angel Washington, Kira Johnson, Amber Rose Isaac, Shalon Irving, LaShonda Hazard, Crystal Galloway, Aaliyah Clark, Shanice Wallace, Sophia Holwin Chavez, Anacel Casillo Lopez, and more recently, Crystal Anderson. When I hear their story, it hits me hard. I have to pause and take a break and take a moment to reflect. Because almost six years ago, I came very close to being on that list. I had to do something to change the narrative. So we started Jace's journey to bring awareness to the disparities in maternal and infant health because I had the resources. I had the access. I had the education. I went to every single appointment to leave that hospital without my son. That trauma brought me here. The statistic that we're probably hearing over, or we should be hearing over and over again today is that black women uh, in America are three times more likely to die from pregnancy. That does not include the fact that there are a lot of black women that experience morbidity from pregnancy. All hands on deck. Uh, and grounding into the fact that we all want the best outcome for our patients. We're all on the same team. We all want the best outcome for them. So remembering that as we move forward from our place of differences. As a medical educator of physicians, um, my a portion of success uh, would be that our medical institutes will be called into action. Um, and what that means is that students will receive upstream education on the historical and the contemporary drivers of this crisis, because inevitably they will touch or interact with a birthing person pre-conception, interconception, or in their journey to pregnancy. During our research, uh, you know, I interviewed uh, 10 uh, black mothers in one of our projects, and, uh, organically, they told me many times over and over that their doctor did not listen to them. Uh, some of them lost their babies, some of them had complications, others just felt disempowered. And I think success will be changing that narrative that uh, where black mothers, where black families feel empowered and supported in, uh, in the working experience. If you are a doula, if you don't teach your, your patient to be a self advocate and let them use their own voice and not you, the voice for them, we have done them a disservice. 
if you are a clinician and you don't ask the question and your hand is on the doorknob, you have done a disservice. If you are a lay person, a grandparent, and you have not shared your experiences for us to learn from, you have done us a disservice. And so I say to you, please, please move forward and using your voice, but standing, as we say it, 10 toes down, black and blue, all right? And saying, we are here and we want change and we won't move until change happens. I had a really, really fulfilling and enjoyable experience today at the Caring Black Maternal Health Conference. For this to be an inaugural event, the turnout was phenomenal, um, packed wall to wall. Content was spot on, continuing education credits, and the education that was provided was so relevant to what we do every day and what we're going through in our community. So thank you to the Caring team. I'm looking forward to next year, and I just know this event will grow and continue to grow and hopefully reach every corner of Charlotte, every corner of North Carolina, and every corner of the country. So kudos on a job well done. I would like to say today that my experience has been liberating. It's been very empowering, and I feel very encouraged as a single black mother to um, endure my journey as a mom as an advocate for others, and I've learned a lot today. Today has been, I don't know, amazing, very informational, very empowering. Um, I feel joyful, hopeful for the next journey, the next step of my life. I'm thankful for a guided journey, being a, cl a client through caring, being able to be um, presented such opportunities to be great, and I just am enjoying the experience, and I hope that I am able to not only encourage myself, but um, encourage other young black women to also take heed to the opportunity and just take hold of it and run with it. Because everything is here, you just gotta use it. All opportunities present themselves. But what do we do with the tools that we're given? So I'm hoping to use this not only to enhance myself and my growth and further my education, but also encourage others to do the same. So I'm just happy. Today was the greatest day. Hi, my name is Charnel. I'm so excited to be a part of this conference today, to be around people that are supporting the same initiative, same cause, and wanting to make change in the community is amazing. I took away some gems, learned so much, was able to network, meet different community members, and I'm so excited about the journey to come the change to come, and then also to come back next year. Thank you.